workshop entrepreneurship skill attitude and behavior development organized by icc in association with skuran edisel of bpmt now let me give a brief overview about today's first speaker ms randita sarkar she is a third year student of it of this institute she is incoming problem solver and dev and doubt mentor at prebytes she is currently working as a software developer intern at cosi sia pbt ltd kolkata she is a former web developer at rsm bangalore former graphic designer at team cognito kolkata and dgf noida she has been selected as a top mentor for domain of ml and python in gwoc 21 and swoc 21 she has published her research works and ij csma and spinger two of her articles have been published in an international magazine this tech fast week now without further ado let me invite ms ronjita shortcut she will present a lecture on breast cancer prediction using transfer learning ronjita thanks a lot sundrima for your uh, introduction so so let's start with our very with our very first presentation today i think my screen is visible properly right can anybody confirm is my screen visible properly yes ronjita yeah okay so let's start so here's a uh, here's a paper that we have worked on that is the breast cancer detection using transfer learning techniques in convolutional neural network the paper is accepted in ea 2022 conference that's going to be happen in march 2022 in a coming month actually and it will be published under the springer natural nature book series lecture notes in the network and systems so let's continue now why we choose this domain to work on as uh, the graph suggests that in each year there will be this much amount of women who is affected in breast cancer in medical imagery so that we can detect the uh, patches the cancer patches as early as possible so there are some there are some uh, kind of there are some kind of uh, this, uh, nowadays there's a, uh, we didn't get that much of accuracy so we try to build our own kind of a model to reach uh, a good uh, amount of accuracy this time so let's uh, elaborate this so our research domain is there are so many deep learning model presents uh, presents nowadays but we worked on the transfer learning technique and in this transfer learning technique we worked on resnet 152v2 and inception v3 model to carry forward our research so let's see how we how we have done this so this is a very uh, normal uh, research flow means the problem flow that that we have followed so firstly we have collected data here we have used the breast histopathological image as you seen in the left side then obviously a data either its image or text it must be gone through some pre processing technique pre processing means in the easier way in each data there may be some uh, null images or the uh image may be very much long or it's uh that we don't need right we need a very small amount small places to detect that image so for that we go gone through data pre processing technique in this data pre processing technique we have followed data mounting data resizing labels encoding data shuffling data visualization and data reshaping and then uh we focused on feature learning uh what i mean what i mean by feature learning i will explain you later in this feature learning part we have used the cnn model and the cnn feature learning technique so in this cnn feature learning technique uh, after using the cnn feature learning technique we have used two transfer learning model the first is resnet 152 and then inception v3 model and after that the data classification how it works then we passed the entire model to convolutional network then drop out and see this b and m stands for binning and malignant 
so this is how the our entire plan work uh, our plan of the research paper so uh, as as the gif showed this is exactly how the cnn model works means you show pass on some input data and then uh, it will pass with a beautiful neural network and it will predict is it a dog or a cat but it's not at all simple with transfer learning let me show you how it works in transfer learning so as you see in this picture we use convolutional neural network uh, as uh, which is a part of artificial neural network as i shown in the last slide that is ann but this is uh, the convolutional neural network in convolutional neural network there is, there are some convolution that we have to treat so here in the input set you can say if this is uh, okay zero if this is zero so in the very first convolutional neural network what happens that this zero is uh, being part into uh, many many pixels and uh, pixels means you can consider this in a kind of a matrix a 2d matrix this 2d matrix is separated into three rgb channel red green and blue and after this red green and blue channel as each image a uh, colored image has three channel rgb so this is being differentiated in a rgb channel as you see in the convolutional layer 1 uh, it is after uh, kya hota hai na this input image is being separated into three rgb channels then it means merged again and this is how the first layer works what happens here there are some kind of a kernel kernel means you can see a filter in this process a filter is passed over the input image in in this way like in this way and it multiplies this email, input image with that particular filter and finally you get the convolutional layer 1 output why we do so just to detect the age of 9 to 7 and all now again convolutional layer 3 layer 2 we do the same kind of a thing to detect the entire uh, number in 3 or uh, in 3 and we can add many more as per our choice and ultimately we add a dense layer and finally the last layer is the flatten layer to flatten the entire matrix in a single line means a 2d matrix let's suppose 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so it will be flattened in a single line i'll show you how the multiplication works uh in this particular uh, thing i know it's little bit of mathematical but it is mathematical actually so uh, in this particular uh, image uh, gif you can uh, see that uh, how i told you about rgb channel so in this way the multiplication works if you see the first kernel this kernel is actually a filter made up of your own feature and you actually multiply this to matrix and you get the output as a result and this is how image recognition works uh, using cnn and then we used i told you that was just what i shown you that is the basic cnn architecture but we have used transfer learning technique what i mean by transfer learning technique transfer learning technique is that there are many scientists from google and microsoft who have already proposed some kind of a model that is used of cnn but it is not a very simple cnn ki a convolution rahega max pool and then the output no they have passed many many convolutional layer and max pooling layer to detect the to detect the image with higher accuracy so that is called transfer learning the when you used the proposed cnn model now why why are what we do different here see the inception v3 model is already being proposed uh, by some scientist most probably few years back so we used this particular model you can see in the inception v3 model structure how complicated it is and so this is the uh, structure that we used inception v3 model then we have used our own kind of a flatten model and two dense layer as well as to uh, in activation function we have changed the activation from relu uh, we have used two activation function actually first one is relu and second one is softmax to detect our image which gave us accuracy around 90% in break his data set so this is our first and secondly we used resnet 152 v2 model 
this is also a proposed model. Uh, so then we reshape this data using reshaping layer, again a flattened layer, dense activation, means uh, we use few hidden layers with that and dense layer. And again, activation, we have changed two to three activation function. And finally, again, we detect the image with around in resonate 87% accuracy. So this is all about our research. You can see the detected patches here. Like this is the output that is being generated by the CNN model. Here, the red sign are the uh, patch area over the breast. Okay, means uh, this is the patches area that is being generated after getting this accuracy by our model. And the right hand side is the same patches, but this is a heat map kind of a diagram. Okay, so this is all about our project, uh, our research. And at the end, you can see the cancerous patches and non-cancerous patches are being detected by the model with uh, the accuracy I have told you. So uh, why? what is the, why our, our paper is being accepted or it's different? Because uh, as I written here, the automatic analysis of breast cancer histopathology image for the given data set illustrates the applicability and powerful cap uh, capacity of the uh, transfer learning model that we can reach a good amount of uh, accuracy using transfer learning model as well. So this is all about our research paper. I hope you all like it. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, thank you, Rondrita. Now, I will present your certificate. Thank you so much, Chodrima. Yeah. yeah, Ronak, you can stop this. Next, let me introduce our second speaker, Ms. Devoshmita Bagh. She is, a, she is a third year student of Electronics and Communication Engineering of our institute. She is a tech enthusiast, enthusiast and loves to explore every aspect of it in order to bring up something innovative. She was selected for semifinals of Samvedan 2021, Sensing Solution for Bharat National Hackathon organized by IIT Madras, and Sony India, which encourages citizens to come up with solutions using IoT sensor board. Now, I will hand over the mic to Ms. Devoshmita Bag. Today, she will present her work on an intelligent drone based smart farming solution using presence board. Devoshmita? Chondrima, uh, I have one pro uh, problem with the network. Uh, yeah. Let me just pass on to the next because I can't join actually. I'm talking from Rajeshi's ID. Okay. Rohan, are you there? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so next I will introduce Rohan. He is presently pursuing bachelor's degree in information technology from our institute. He has worked on few projects that have allowed him to put what he had learned in the classroom into use in a pra practical sense. This year, he is a part of Google's developer uh, club of our college, where the students learn and develop their skills. Now, I will invite Mr. Rohan Rudra to carry on with his lecture. His topic of today's presentation is stereo depth estimation. Okay. Thank you, Didi. Uh, good evening to everyone. 
so today I will be presenting stereo depth estimation, and this will be an overview of my project which I have done. Okay, so what is stereo? We we all are familiar with the stereo imaging capability that our eyes give us, and the same thing is done by the computers with the by finding the correspondences between the points that are seen by the different cameras from the different angles. So with the help of that, we are able to calculate the depth or depth of the object from the camera, which were, okay, sorry, I have not full screen. Okay, uh, so why depth map? Uh, measuring distance relative to vision remains difficult, but absolutely key to unlocking existing applications such as autonomous driving, 3D scene, reconstruction, and argument reality. In robotics, depth is the key prerequisite to perform multiple tasks such as perception, navigation, and planning. Creating a 3D map would be another interesting application. Computing depth allows us to back project images capture from the multiple views into 3D. So that is the reason we, we will require the depth map. And also this is an example of the 3D reconstruction of a uh, scene by using the uh, number of images which are taken from various cameras from different angles. So why we are using stereo means why we are using two cameras and not any other sensors. Yes, there are other sensors also, like we know that LiDAR, which also give the similar results and also very good result actually. As you can see here, this is an image of the output of a LiDAR. But there are several advantages of LiDAR. The first one is that they are very much expensive. So that it actually makes the uh, makes his application less uh, affordable. Also, it uh, in case of performance, it get it gets affected by bad weather conditions. Also, as uh, it is using a laser beam and using the sonar technology to read the surroundings. So it get disrupted by the reflections which it face from the surroundings. So that is the reason we are shifting to cameras as the cameras are very much cheaper than the LIDARs and also with, with uh, currently with the advance in computer vision and the technology, we can manipulate the images and get the more accurate and detailed results of our surroundings from using cameras. And also the, the, and also the cameras, these same technique are used in uh, many electronic vehicles and even in our Mars rovers and also drones. So now let's see what is the basic idea that we'll be using. Okay, so there is an image of an ancient camera system. Here you can see that there is an object. This is a 3D object, which is being, uh, which is being uh, uh, presented in this wall inverted. So we can say that this is a, this is a uh, object in the 3D space. That is, it has some 3D coordinates. And this is the, its, reflect, uh, its image, which is presented in a 2D plane. That means it has, it has two coordinates. So basically here, a 3D coordinate is being transformed to a 2D coordinate. So we will be using the same principle here. That is, we will reverse the logic. That is, we will be using a 2D coordinate from the 2D plane of the image. Then we will transfer it back to its real position that is in the 3D coordinates in the real world. And here, this, uh, this is the focal length. This is from this world to this. This is the focal length of the camera. And this same technology, this pinhole technology is only used in modern cameras also. But that there is a difference that nowadays this, the, the, here we can see that we are getting an inverted image. So basically this is corrected by rotating this along the positive Z axis. Um, sorry. Okay, uh, so uh, this is an image of number eight and uh, talking about images that images are nothing but a matrix whose each cell contains the pixel values or we can say that is the color values. Uh, here, this is a grayscale image, which means that each pixel will be having only one channel that is only one color value. So here zero represents the darkest and 255 and more represents the white color. 
So here the image manipulation means we have to manipulate these matrices by mathematically. Okay, now let's move on to the theory which we'll be applying. So we, we, will, uh, we will be using the triangulation method. Now here, look at this uh, image. Assume that we have two cameras whose image planes are exactly coplanar with each other with exactly parallel optical axis that are known distance apart and with the equal focal lengths that is uh, F F L and the FR. Also assume for now that the principal points that is CX left and the CX right have been calibrated to have the same pixel coordinates in their respective left and the right images. Here, this is the uh, left camera space and this is the right camera space. So here the images are row aligned there and that every pixel row of one camera aligns perfectly with the other one. We will also assume that we can find a point in the physical world uh, P in the left and the right image views as the PL and the PR, which will have the respective horizontal coordinates at XL and the XR. This is the, in this simplified case, <clears throat> XL and XR to be horizontal positions of the points in the left and the right image allows us to show that the depth which is here that the Z is inversely proportional to the disparity. Disparity means the difference between the two points. That is the difference between XL and the XR. That is the difference between the projections from the two different cameras. Uh, so looking at the formula, you can see here that Z is the depth and XL minus XR, which are the difference between the two coordinates of the same point in the two different images from different cameras gives us the disparity. So these two are inversely proportional. And here we have that focal length and the baseline. These two are our constants. So what is this baseline? Baseline is basically, a baseline is basically uh, this one that is the left and the, the distance between the left and the right camera, the how far distance they are put, uh, they are uh, put. So this T is the baseline, which will be constant. And here is the focal length. We all know focal length of the camera. And so depth and disparity. So these relations gives us an idea that when the depth will be more, the disparity will be less. And when depth will be uh, less, the disparity will be more. That means the objects which are near to the camera will, will give us high resolution depth images uh, than the objects which are far away from the camera. So now to execute the previous thing, that is to calculate, uh, to estimate the depth, we will follow this algorithm. That is first we will take the, a stereo pair of images, then we will rectify them and pre-process them to improve the pixel qualities. Then we will do a block matching technique to find the uh, similar key points and to calculate the disparity. Then we will apply it simply to the formula as we have seen earlier, that is the inversely proportional formula. Then we will visualize our outcomes. Okay, and there are two more important variables we should know. That is one is translation, translational vector, other is the rotational matrix. So here, uh, suppose that this is the our left camera and this is the right camera and they are tilted a bit. And so let's assume that in this total camera system, this left camera is our origin. So for taking this as origin, the distance of this right camera, this position, you give uh, this uh, distance of this right camera is the translation, that is this one. And rotation is basically the how much the camera is tilted, uh, how much camera is tilted will give us the R. Now there is a question may arise, why we are, uh, means why the camera are not kept parallel or they are not straight, why they are tilted a bit. This is done to reduce the field of view. As we have seen earlier from the relation, that the object, the object near to the camera will have the more high resolution depth images. So that's why we are uh, decreasing the field of view to get the as much as detailed uh, uh, information about the depth. Okay, and so now we have see what is uh, rectification. So from the uh, images, First, we have to undistort the images as the lens will have some tangential and radial distortions which can be removed mathematically. So after that, we have to rectify. Now, as we have seen earlier that we are keeping the camera frames a bit tilted that we are rotating it. So we will rectifying it to keep uh, the rows of each pixels parallel to each other 
which will be help us to find the difference between them or to apply the block matching technique and this rectification and, and this distortion uh, and to remove the distortion will be done mathematically and following a special type of geometry of stereo pair which is called the epipolar geometry which we will not see here okay now block matching technique so uh, this is uh, so this is a so what is block matching technique suppose uh, this is our left image this is the right image and here suppose this is a object in our real world which is being represented here at a coordinate x0 y0 so we will uh, move to the right image and, and start from this exact coordinate here that is x0 and y0 and start searching for this exact point in this image so we will start from right and go to the left and why and why we are doing this there is also a logic and it is because of that similar epipolar geometry as i have told you so we will start to find for it and when we will find it then we will take this position and we will find the difference between this coordinate and the, this coordinate and the result we will get will be our disparity that is the difference so if we find the point here then we will say it is a minimum disparity and if we go to the uh, left and then we find then it will say it is a maximum disparity so basically this is a block matching technique and the semi global block matching technique will we will apply this is uh, it is also same exactly same but it has some um, better optimization okay now see the you know yeah uh, so as i have told you that we will pre process the images to improve its pixel properties so as we have seen when we take pictures there are many situations when we get an underexposed image or some areas are overexposed or the contrast is not good or the shadows are not good so uh, to improve those things and to make the image look sharper and more clearer we will apply some of the methods so uh, methods to improve it and here this is the histogram of the three types of uh, of the same image here you can see it is starting from 0 and it is going to 250 that is the pixel values here and this is the brightest this is the darkest area this is the brightest part so here you can see that the brightest parts are more higher than the brightest and mid tones are very poor so after doing few iterations and applying some methods we will finally getting here a gaussian curve where we can see that the darkest are also at a good level also the mid tones are good and also the brights are less so this will help us in our block matching technique okay so this is our output uh, the depth map and now we will visualize this okay so uh, we are using open 3d for visualization as you can see we are getting a uh, we are plotting here a point cloud of every pixel as you can see the depth is clearly you can see here it is how the the how the objects are placed in the real world and yes there are few uh, means there are few problems that you can see this can be removed by more optimization and improving the algorithm okay uh, so the future aspect we can optimize the process and improve its speed and accuracy so that we can run on less powered cpus and less space we can use these different color spaces and pre processing techniques for improving the images also we can use the monocular method uh, um, which will be more effective and another another thing the this here this whole time we are using following only the traditional formulas and the methods we are not going into deep learning or machine learning and we can also use them and they will also give us a more and more accurate results but we are following traditional because uh, nowadays in the electronic vehicles or you can say in drones on any other thing but using traditional method is a little bit of effective because uh, they are using much uh, uh, much less power of cpus so it makes it a cost effective and these are the references which i have used Okay thank you so that's all from from my side Thank you Rohan for your excellent presentation uh, Thank you uh, now I will request Rohan to present the 
सर्टिफिकेट ओके थैंक यू आना चाहिए कुछ टॉपिक Devashmita, are you there? Algorithm under the different conditions and scenarios. Now, coming to the domain we have worked with, the major domain we have used is the image analysis and sensor data analysis, and the minor domain is IoT, that is Internet of Things. So, A Farm, the solution to a problem. A Farm is an attempt to bring agriculture in the field of robotics and automation. Agriculture in the modern is modernizing. in every field from genetic mutation to smart irrigation system to conserve water with this project it is intended to bring automation to the field in farming through automation the intention is to reduce the hardship of the manual labor encountered on the field the drone has to be developed to work in three modes firstly sowing that is planting of the seeds in the soil uh, so uh, soil can be it can be done using image processing on the crop land secondly irrigation of the crop that is efficiently watering such as plant health insects and animal disturbance and lastly monitoring the crops that includes the uh, uh, animal disturbance which is feasible from image and video data this will help concerned person to take suitable actions from the crop land area so now we have like planned how we will work on this project so here for the farming bot a remote control drone will be used that will serve the purpose the uh, generally we thought of making the drone but uh, to cut the cost or to uh, save our time we thought of buying a drone from the market and it will be utilized with the sensors and monitoring parts which will be the main focus of the project the drone will be integrated with the presence board under which the the project has been proposed Have, it has a built-in camera that will take the pictures of the crop field, and then it will send the images to the cloud service. Here we have a, a hardware a block diagram of our project. We can see uh, the drone, and these are the like uh, drone will be attached with the presence board, and with the presence board we have different kind of sensors that is moisture sen sensor, then powers and USB will be for the battery backup. It will be attached. Then the sensors. as presence main board will be attached with that we have the camera board the monitor uh, which will uh, consume the data and it will give to the pc and nearest wifi modules that we have that we will be using in the model so now at first the crop land area from the top view can be visualized visualized as a rectangular area or approximately re rectangular area as we can see in this picture Uh, in this area, the drone is supposed to localize uniform space grid points on the field under varying vertical positions using image processing. The grid points denote the points where sowing of seeds can be done. The seeds can be equally spaced in the successive holes for organized and proper cultivation and optimum production. Secondly, the captured images will be analyzed and defined. Definite actions will be taken. like if the crop appears ripened then it can be harvested and if any crop is found to be affected by the pest and insects then it could be cut and stop further uh, spread of the pest thirdly for the monitoring system that is being designed using various sensors like camera moisture sensor etc presence board has an inbuilt sensor hub that can accommodate the suitable sensors mentioned above moreover the board has a built-in presence and event detector that can be utilized for detection of animal and unauthorized instructions now uh, for the software part we have a like block diagram also for that we will be having three main functions of this program that is sowing irrigation and monitoring thus this algorithm the sowing algorithm will detect the edges of the boundaries of the land using computer vision technique 
then uh, starting from an initial point q let us uh, like assume a point q on the picture then starting from the point q and maintaining a fixed space the drone traverses the entire field row wise and localize the uniform position for showing this would lead to optimum crop production with controlled cost maintenance then coming to the irrigation function the moisture sensor that we have used in our presence board that is a half buried in the ground that will be half buried in the ground and it will measure the percentage of moisture presence in the soil the proposal will uh, will have the model and the relations between the moisture and the wa water volume according to the moisture data the system calculates the volume of water required and spray water from the drone then lastly we will have the monitor function as the drone is taking continuous pictures of the field the system analyzes the images and the field whether all the crops are fine or not by keeping various parameters in mind like color of the leaves fruits vegetables uh, it grows and size of the leaves and many more moreover the image analysis can also be detected unauthorized in intuition into the crop field so our idea basically deals with various sensors uh, and tries to help the farmers of our country to better agriculture with the help of technology and hence uh, it will justify the theme of our project that is some way in 2021 that we have participated and almost our idea has been uh, went to semi finals that is for sensor using sensors we have to give a solution to the farming area so this was the project uh, project and idea for our uh, starting our project so i'm done with this and thank you thank you devashmita for your wonderful lecture now i will present you certificate Can you share the certificate? I guess my camera was not on. No, oh, your camera was not on. I just saw this because okay. Yeah. Thank you. Charlie, you can stop presenting. Yes. Yeah. Sovita, are you there? हेलो Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Oh. Uh, okay. 
ओके जस्ट वेट अ सेकंड एंड द होस्ट विल मेक यू द कॉल I think he is facing some network issues. Ah, uh, so with Nada, please wait for a few moments. Onoxer is making you focus. Okay, okay. Okay. Lastly, I will give a brief overview about today's last speaker, Mr. Shobhik Das. He is a fourth-year student of BPIMT from Electrical Department. He is uh, running his own business on manufacturing and selling lithium batteries throughout India using various e-commerce websites. His future plan is to export his batteries outside India. His future planning is to export his battery outside India. For that, he has taken MSME to help to get importer exporter code, which is mandatory to import export of goods. Now, without further ado, let me invite our last speakers of today's workshop, Mr. Shavik Das. His topic is to how to start your own business from scratch. Uh, is it visible my screen? Yes, it is visible. so i will be explaining about the uh, business and how to start it from scratch because uh, when i was at second year i was trying to uh, start some business or uh, or i was trying to make some prototype and uh, working throughout so after i was in the main uh first uh, first i was started with home automation uh, home automation products like uh, which we, you can operate from your uh, you can operate from your smartphone to uh, connect to connect your different appliances together so uh, after that i have also try, uh, tried e-commerce in a different uh, in the different e-commerce website amazon flipkart and others after that when uh, i i thought of doing some manufacturing work then i get into the ev industries so uh, so uh, so what you uh, so first of all what is a business in a definition it you can you will say that business is a organization or and or enterprise which will include uh, non profit or profitable organization such as a limited liability company sole proprietorship or corporate but according to me it is finding a solution of a problem the problem which we face in day to day life 
so you will ask how to find the problem statement so i i think uh, finding the problem statement is start uh, it starts from yourself first of all we need to observe our lifestyle and uh, and observe that what are the problem we face in day to day life uh, someone may face some uh, food issue or sometimes some some people face uh, any other like uh, machineries or in some uh, some people face some people face a software issue so they can start their app business or website development or anything like this so first of all we need to find ourselves that what are the problems we face and the if we, we can find the solution in a innovative way of our problem then definitely we can try out reaching people who also face the same problem and uh, give them uh, give them solution and we can charge them for uh, our product or service which are provide, which are giving them uh, which solution to their problem so how i started to the ev industry first of all when uh, actually in previous year i purchased one uh, bike which is which was run on uh, petrol so after uh, actually i didn't knew about the uh, license process and all uh, pollution and other things after that i faced many problem on with my bike that uh, first of all the mileage was very low and secondly the problem was uh, i need, needed to renew my insurance every year after and also i need to renew uh, pollution certificate which is very mandatory by the government and uh, then after i thought uh, what about electric vehicles are they need this kind of uh, licensing or uh, insurance like this so then i find out that uh, the electric vehicles which are under 25 km speed or 25 km per hour speed they don't require any license or, uh, or any insurance or like this so i uh, explored explored some of the topics about the uh, electric vehicles then i found out their battery uh, the electric vehicle which is which cost around minimum 50 to 60000 or or uh, or electric uh, cars which cost around 10 lakhs to to 15 lakhs the nine, the 60 percent cost are of their battery the battery is used in the car which uh, barely goes uh, 10, 5 to 10 year or in or the battery which are which are used uh, in uh, in previous time which is lead acid battery in electric bikes they last for more uh, maximum two, 2 to 3 years for that they have to pay 30000 40000 rupees and after, um, for example a person buys a electric scooter uh, worth 60000 after 2 years he will have to exchange his battery with 30000 rupees for to run uh, to again use it for again two year after that i researched about the batteries then i uh, then i found that lithium batteries which are very uh, uh, very long lasting and uh, give a good amount of mileage and it is also lightweight and easy to use for people like uh, me so i researched about the batteries after that uh, i get uh, get starting uh, developing uh, batteries from myself and i uh, i give training to my team which was with uh, who were working for me in my previous businesses in e-commerce so uh, we together build our first battery this one which was uh, which was cost me very less which was charged by the commercial batteries so i thought that uh, i can sell this battery if i manufacture in a large scale for the for this uh, i did and for this this will be a starting of a new business so i started to uh, learn about what are the things which are required in battery for uh, giving it a premium look and premium 
product so the things which are required by a uh, battery is that over voltage protection under voltage protection uh, fast charging these are the specification which are demanded by the consumers so uh, so uh, i researched about that if i can provide it at a low cost which is uh, which is charged by the uh, commercial companies like okinawa and other brands so they used to charge 30000 40000 rupees but my batteries which are manufactured at very cheap so after that i get started and um, and the machinery some of the machineries which are used to uh, quality control of the batteries are like this these are uh, this is a capacity testing machine which uh, recently i have purchased for quality testing of every cells to individually balance and uh, maintain a quality battery pack and also i have uh, produced some of the uh, electric bicycles which i have uh, sold as a product so these are some of the electric bicycles which i have built with lithium ion battery and uh, electric bicycle kits and uh, i have produced as a product in the market so this all this was all my uh, explanation about my business and i have explained all the expect how i started and how you people can start the thing i can uh, suggest everyone that uh, success do not come in uh, overnight it needs needs a very long uh, time and also very effort so if you can enjoy that effort and uh, explore the things which are uh, your uh, negative 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 or your success then only you can go uh, move forward and get a good successful so the many hurdles which i faced in the ev ev manufacturing i uh, i first of all when i started building these batteries some of the batteries were failed and uh, also i have i had to uh, criticized by the customers but i didn't uh, stop that also i just focused on how to develop the battery and uh, and get it uh, means get it uh, pro with better quality and with better machineries so also you can think of that if you want to start your own business how should you uh, pay for this huge machineries or uh, should you invest this large amount of money so i will definitely not recommend this if you are starting newly you should not uh, invest uh, lots of money which will be uh, very risky for you you can start by uh, experimenting many other things if you are uh, thinking of starting a service based uh, service based business first uh, you uh, collect the data and information of the customers requirement then you can move forward by testing a trial product or uh, testing a prototype for that you can charge a cost to cost to the customer uh, maybe it is not profitable but uh, you can give it to customer with very low cost and it should be manufactured or be it, the service which you are you providing should be uh, starting from very low cost which can help you if you also fails so that's all from my side uh, thank you for uh, giving me opportunity to present here Thank you, Sovita, for your wonderful presentation. Now, I will request Ronak to present your certificate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thanks all. Yeah. Ronak, you can stop presenting. Does anyone have any queries? You can unmute yourself and ask them, or you can also write them in the chat box. 
Okay, I will ask everyone to turn on their camera. I will take a screenshot. Yes. Yes. Okay, and uh, I will also share the link of the feedback form, and everyone is requested to fill it up before leaving. Just give me a second. Fill it up before leaving the meet. Yeah, and can everyone just start their videos? Okay, so thank you everyone for joining us today. You may leave now.